Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard and I'm so glad you're joining me today. Today's episode is gonna be on a species a lot of you all have requested in the comments down below these videos. If you enjoy species specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you never miss out on a video. Hoselotheria metallica, known throughout the hobby as the Goody Sapphire Ornamental, the metallic blue tarantula, and the peacock parachute spider, is an old world arboreal tarantula that has a very interesting history. This species was initially described by the arachnologist Pocock in 1899 in the town of Goody, India, which is where the common name derives. This tea was lost to science and time until it was rediscovered in 2001 in the Kadapa and Chittor districts of Andhra Pradesh, which is far from the original location it was first described over a hundred years earlier. Some theories suggest that the species was accidentally transported to the original location where Pocock found it by the spider stowing away on a train or being mistakenly transported from its endemic location to Goody because the spider hid away in boxes or some other kind of container as that species was not found in that location again. In fact, this species was mostly believed to be restricted to the 100 square kilometer region that is quickly being destroyed by humans by logging and clearing out land for development and agriculture. Due primarily to the destruction of its habitat for logging for firewood harvesting, the International Union of Conservation of Nature has classified the species as critically endangered. This makes the species illegal to remove from its endemic location and export from the country. Luckily though, it is not included on the most recent sites lists of species of Postulotheria that are not allowed to be imported into the US or sold across state lines. This means that we are able to breed this species, at least at the time of this video, and keep the species alive and thriving in the hobby. Due to the bright blue coloration and unique pattern of this tarantula, it is highly sought after by hobbyists, which encourages many breeders to continue to keep and breed this species. When this tea was originally introduced into the hobby years ago, slings were selling for as much as five to six hundred dollars a piece. But as more people have bred them successfully, especially in Europe and the US, there are many more available and the prices drop dramatically as you can now purchase a one inch sling for around seventy five dollars. This is a fast growing tarantula and females can reach a size of about six inches and live around twelve years, while males are a little smaller and only live for about four years. Being an old world tarantula, the species does not have urticating hairs, but is very fast and has a powerful venom that causes moderate to severe pain and long lasting local and generalized muscle cramps, accelerated heart rate, sweating, nausea, and headache. Of all the Postulotheria, this species seems to be the least defensive, and though they are not as prone to show a threat pose and strike as some other species, like the Ornata for example, they do tend to run around their enclosure like crazy when startled or disturbed. This tarantula is very photosensitive and does not like bright lights and will retreat into its hide almost every time you turn the lights on, making it very difficult to photograph or record video. I keep my spiderling goody sapphires in a basic arboreal spiderling enclosure with more height than width. I fill the enclosure up about one third with substrate and add some sphagnum moss on the ground then lean a small piece of cork bark up against the side of the enclosure. At this size my slings usually burrow into the ground a little and make a web curtain around the base of the cork bark and spend most of their time in hiding, venturing out only to grab a cricket or drink a little water. I make sure to put a small water dish on the floor of the enclosure that is easily accessible with tongs because they have a tendency to web over the dish or fill it with substrate. So I need to be able to remove it easily without disturbing the tarantula so I can clean it and fill it back up with water. I provide good cross ventilation and avoid putting any vent holes on the lid to help keep in a little humidity while still providing good air exchange. Once the tea starts to outgrow its enclosure, I move it into a basic acrylic juvenile arboreal enclosure. Again, I provide good cross ventilation and a water dish, but a little less substrate as this tea starts to spend more time off the ground as it gets larger. I put in a small half round cork bark or hot glue some cork bark to the sides of the enclosure and add some plastic leaves to give the tea ample places to web and hide so that it's comfortable and relaxed. 
Then once this tea begins to outgrow that enclosure, I will sometimes move them into a two and a half gallon aquarium I have retrofitted to be an arboreal enclosure or put them in an exoterra nano tall enclosure. I also provide a hollow cork tube secured to the side of the enclosure for the tea to use as its hide. I add some sphagnum moss for it to use in its dirt curtains, provide a nice sized water dish and some substrate. This tea may still want to burrow a little at this size and may make its home at the base of the cork bark but most of mine really start using the hollow cork bark as their hide or webbing up dirt curtains in the back corners of their enclosure. Once my female began to look cramped in this setup, I moved her into an exoterra small tall enclosure that is 12 by 12 by 18 inches and provides more than enough room for her. I add plants and cork bark or branches so she has plenty of places to hide and feel safe. I keep a water dish on the floor of the enclosure but I also supply a smaller water dish towards the top so she always has access to fresh water nearby. I fill the bottom of the enclosure up with a few inches of cocoa fiber that I keep mostly dry, though once or twice a month I'll overflow the water dish so that a corner of the enclosure has damp substrate. As far as feeding, I feed my spiderlings under an inch small crickets and pre-kill any prey that is near the size of the spiderling. I feed them about one prey item twice a week and am sure to remove any uneaten prey at least 24 hours later. I don't want to leave any prey wandering around the enclosure if the tarantula decides to molt. As slings, they have more of a gray color, though some of the pattern may be visible. But they are extremely fast and will run laps around the enclosure if you spook them, which can make feeding time a little stressful. Always have a catch cup handy anytime you are opening their enclosure. For juveniles around two and a half inches or so, I start feeding them about two medium crickets once a week. And as they get larger, I may feed them three or four medium crickets or even one or two large crickets. I just make sure to never feed them a cricket that is larger than two thirds the size of the tarantula. They can still be very flighty at this size, though not as skittish as the spiderlings. If you provide them with an adequate space to retreat to, then you won't have as much difficulty with the pokey running around but it is still very possible, so always be ready and have a catch cup on hand. For adults over four inches, I feed them three or four large crickets every 10 to 14 days. The closer the tea is to full grown, the more crickets I will throw in, but usually not more than five or six large crickets at a time. After a molt, when the abdomen is smaller, I will feed them more often, like every seven to 10 days. But as the abdomen gets larger, I cut back to every other week or two. Unlike the Pivotata, it is very difficult to determine the sex of your Metallica by appearance alone. It is a hotly debated topic on a lot of forums and Facebook groups about whether there is sexual dimorphism in this species, as some claim to be able to determine the sex ventrally or by the pattern on the carapace. And though males tend to have a bright blue color, that is also not definitive as a freshly molded female is much brighter than one nearing molt. The only guaranteed way to determine the gender of your Goody Sapphire is to examine a fresh molt. I will be posting a video in the near future that will walk you through the steps of sexing a tarantula molt. But in the meantime, a quick search on YouTube or Google will provide you with the information you need to determine your tarantula's gender. You can also reach out for help from the community in Facebook groups like mine and post some pictures of the molt and have other members help you determine its gender. Other than its bright blue color, the species is also unique as it has been found to be successfully kept communally. There are a lot of keepers in the hobby, some here on YouTube, that currently have P. Metallica communal setups that are thriving. So if one fast, venomous, beautiful blue tarantula isn't enough for you, you can have five or 10 of them all in one enclosure. Now I've been talking to Tanya over at Fear Not Tarantulas about maybe being interested in buying a uh, communal pack of these P. Metallicas from her, because I think that'd be a really exciting communal to get set up here in the Tarantula Collective. Now some breaking news, a very interesting fact, something that just came out. They've actually found some P. Metallicas outside of its endemic region in India. It was most recently spotted in a cave in the Pakamalai Reserve Forests near Genji in the Villa Perman district. And it was found in different locations throughout that reserve forest. But they say it's not known to be found anywhere else in India or Sri Lanka. Now it's still considered critically endangered even though they found some more because that habitat is also being destroyed. And because it's so popular in the hobby, they are afraid people will be poaching them just to get them into the pet trade. That's why it's so important to always make sure you're buying captive bred tarantulas. 
The last thing we want to do is support anybody poaching tarantulas from their endemic habitats. Now I've got one adult female and a three, four, yeah, three slings. Well, actually they're juveniles now. One of them I gave away to a winner of a contest. Oh man, it was almost a year ago. But they are a beautiful tarantula and they're very cool to watch. I just wish I could photograph it more, but it seems anytime I walk in the room, my goody sapphires dash for cover. But even if they stay out, as soon as I turn a light on or use a flash, they always run. They really dislike the light. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. I really appreciate when you do that. And if you didn't like the video, then, you know, hit that dislike button. In fact, really show me. Hit it twice. <laughs> I've got some really cool merchandise I just put out on the, the Tarantula Collective merch store. So I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can check that out. We've got hats, cell phone cases, water bottles, as well as all the shirts and stickers and all that other stuff that's been on there for a minute. And while you're down in the description below this video, I've also got a lot of affiliate links. So if you want to support the channel, just use one of those links down below, whether you're buying some stuff off Amazon or, or getting some bioactive substrate from the bio dude. It's appreciated, whatever you do. There's also a couple new Patreon supporters that joined this month. So big shout out to you all. Thank you very much for your support. And thanks to everyone that's watching these videos and leaving comments down below. Now, if there's a species you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, then be sure to leave that suggestion down there in the comments. You guys have made some really good suggestions that I've got on the list and we'll be covering in those of the coming weeks. A couple of them I'm extremely excited to do, just because there's not much information out there on that species. And anyone in the Midwest or just really into reptiles, me and some of the mods from the Facebook group are gonna be at the Tinley Park NARBC this October. So if you're gonna be making it out to the NARBC, keep your eye out for me, come up and say hello. I'll be shooting a YouTube video there. The mods will be doing live streams for the Facebook group. We might do a live stream on YouTube if we got enough Wi-Fi signal. We'll see how that goes. But I'm really looking forward forward to going and seeing you guys and, and hanging out with fear not tarantulas and probably coming home with some more teas. We'll see how it goes. I went last spring. It was a lot of fun and supposedly it's supposed to be even bigger in the fall. So this might be really awesome. Of all the Postletheria tarantulas, this is by far the most colorful. And it's interesting that science still doesn't even really understand why there's such a bright color of blue and all those other kind of really cool colors that are mixed in there. But what I do know is that they are a lot of fun to watch and when it's out on display, it really impresses anyone, even me. Even when I see it, I'm still impressed. So I understand why it's so popular and why it had such a hefty price tag there for a while, but it's really cool. There's so many breeding projects going on here in the US and other nations across the world. It's really kind of beefing up the supply of them so they're not as expensive as they used to be. If you don't have one in your collection, I would definitely suggest it. And if you're thinking about getting a Postletheria species, this would probably be the one I would start with just because it's so beautiful and it's not as defensive as some of the other tarantulas in the genus. Well, I wanna thank you all for watching this episode. It's always fun hanging out with you guys. I hope I get to see some of you all at Tinley next month, but even if I don't, I will see you next Tuesday. All that I wanted, a full win affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a who line for nothing. I see that we different, you ride and I dub them. I don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places, I know that they sunken. Don't call me your brother, I barely could trust it. I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bugging. And I'ma need all of my dollars on corporate, so hand me the money, I divvy the pie. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the ride I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe And 40 on 50 is really the time Why is you all on my phone like you want me Like you wasn't pushing the kids to the side I don't know if you thinking I'm blind Cross on my crosses and dot on my eyes Done with your efforts, I'm dealing with pressures I know it's a lesson, that's word of the wise